Hello students, in today's video we are going to study pharmacology of uh, chloramphenicol. Now chloramphenicol is an antibiotic. Antibiotics are a class of drugs that are used to treat bacterial infections. Now chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum antibiotic as it acts against a wide range of disease causing bacteria. It acts against both gram positive and gram negative bacteria. Now very important to remember that even though chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum antibiotic, its uh, clinical use is highly restricted due to its toxicity. It can cause bone marrow depression leading to serious adverse effects like uh, aplastic anemia, agranulocytosis, thrombocytopenia. Now initially in 1947, chloramphenicol was obtained from a bacteria that is a Streptomyces venezuela. But now it is synthesized chemically and a commercially available product is synthetic. Now chloramphenicol is bacteriostatic and it inhibits bacterial protein synthesis. Now, in order to understand mechanism of action of uh, chloramphenicol, let's discuss few steps involved in the bacterial protein synthesis. Uh, look at this figure. Uh, it shows uh, a bacterial ribosome. Now, bacterial ribosome consists of two subunits. This is 50S subunit and this is 30S subunit. Now, this is messenger RNA, mRNA. Now, these are codon on messenger RNA. Now, these codons code for specific amino acids. Now, as we all know, messenger RNA is produced from DNA. Now, messenger RNA attaches itself to 30S subunit of bacterial ribosome. Now, 50S subunit has two sites. Now, P or peptidyl site and A or acceptor site. Now this is transfer RNA. Now as we all know, proteins are made up of amino acids. Now this is a nascent or a new peptide chain that is being formed. It is attached to the P site. Now 1, 2, 3 here depict the amino acids of peptide chain. Now next or the fourth amino acid is transported to the A site of ribosome by a specific transfer RNA as per the codon of messenger RNA. Now for the synthesis of bacterial proteins, this peptide chain has to elongate by the addition of more amino acids. So this nascent peptide chain is transported from the P site to the A site and transpeptidation occurs. That means a peptide bond is being formed between the newly attached amino acid and the nascent peptide chain. Now the enzyme peptidyl transferase is required for transpeptidation. So this is how this peptide chain keeps elongating and required bacterial protein is synthesized. Uh, now let's quickly understand mechanism of action of chloramphenicol. Now chloramphenicol reversibly binds to bacterial 50S ribosomal subunit. Chloramphenicol then inhibits the enzyme peptidyl transferase which is required for the transpeptidation. So this peptide bond is not formed between the newly attached amino acid and the nascent peptide chain. So this prevents elongation of the peptide chain and thus bacterial protein synthesis is inhibited. So by inhibiting the bacterial protein synthesis, chloramphenicol inhibits or it limits the bacterial growth. So now the bacteria cannot grow and thus chloramphenicol exerts bacteriostatic effect. That means it inhibits the bacterial growth. However, in higher doses, chloramphenicol can produce bactericidal effect 
and can kill the bacteria. So, this is the mechanism of action of chloramphenicol. Uh, now, let us study antimicrobial spectrum of chloramphenicol. So, as discussed, chloramphenicol is primarily bacteriostatic and it inhibits or limits bacterial growth. However, higher concentrations of chloramphenicol kill some bacteria and therefore exerts bactericidal effect. Now, chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum antibiotic that is active against gram positive and gram negative cocci and bacilli. It is also active against rickettsia and mycoplasma. Now, very important high incidence of resistance has developed among many bacteria. Now, in addition to this, chloramphenicol is ineffective against mycobacteria, pseudomonas, many proteas, viruses, and fungi. So, this is the uh, this is in brief antimicrobial spectrum of chloramphenicol. Uh, now, let us see two few important pharmacokinetic parameters of chloramphenicol. Chloramphenicol is rapidly and completely absorbed after oral administration. So, the common route of administration of chloramphenicol is the oral route. Now, 50 to 60 percent of chloramphenicol is bound to plasma proteins. It is widely distributed and also crosses the blood brain barrier. It also crosses placenta and it is secreted in the milk. And therefore, the use of chloramphenicol is contraindicated in pregnancy and during lactation. Now, chloramphenicol is metabolized in the liver. In the liver, it is conjugated with glucuronic acid and then it is excreted in the urine. Plasma half-life T half of uh, chloramphenicol is 3 to 5 hours in the adults. Now, in addition to its uh, oral use, it is also administered topically as eardrop, then as eye drop, eye ointment and also parenterally. So, this is in brief uh, about the pharmacokinetics of chloramphenicol. Uh, now, let us discuss indications of chloramphenicol. Now, clinical use of chloramphenicol is highly uh, restricted uh, due to its uh, serious adverse effects like uh, bone marrow depression, uh, gray baby syndrome. So, its use is limited to uh, serious infections. Uh, not treated by other safer antimicrobials. So, chloramphenicol is used only if an alternative antimicrobial agent is not available. Now, chloramphenicol can be used uh, topically as an eye drop for superficial eye infection that is uh, bacterial conjunctivitis that is redness and inflammation of eye due to bacterial infection. Then uh, chloramphenicol eardrops can be used for otitis externa uh, that is the uh, infection of external ear. Chloramphenicol can also be used for intraocular infections. Uh, it can be used for endothelmitis. Endothelmitis is uh, uh, infection of uh, internal eye due to uh, sensitive bacteria. Another use can be in pyrogenic, also known as bacterial meningitis. Now, presently, third generation cephalosporines with or without vancomycin are the first line drugs for the empirical therapy of bacterial meningitis. Uh, it can be used for anaerobic infections, but uh, clindamycin or metronidazole are primarily used. Now, in 1980s, chloramphenicol was used for the treatment of uh, enteric fever or typhoid. But now, due to the emergence of uh, salmonella typhi resistant to chloramphenicol and due to uh, serious adverse effects of chloramphenicol, third generation cephalosporines are used for the treatment of typhoid. Then, for brucellosis and rickettsial infection, uh, now, tetracycline is used for whooping cuff 
erythromycin is used. So these are the clinical uses of chloramphenicol. call. Uh, now let's discuss adverse effects of chloramphenicol. Now as we have already discussed, clinical use of uh, chloramphenicol is highly restricted due to its uh, serious adverse effects. Now bone marrow depression is the most serious adverse effect of chloramphenicol. It can be non-dose dependent or it can be dose dependent. Now non-dose uh, dependent bone marrow depression is the idiosyncratic reaction and it causes bone marrow depression which results in aplastic anemia. Now it's rare, unpredictable but serious and often fatal aplastic anemia. Now aplastic anemia occurs when enough red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets are not produced. On the other side, in dose dependent bone marrow depression, dose and the duration of chloramphenicol therapy causes myelosuppression or causes bone marrow depression. So therefore, it is predictable and it causes reversible anemia with thrombocytopenia and neutropenia. Another major effect of uh, adverse effect of chloramphenicol could be optic neuritis. That is uh, inflammation of nerve. Uh, inflammation of optic nerve that is the nerve of eye. It can cause acute or subacute loss of vision. Now in addition to this numbness that is loss of sensation or tingling or prickling sensation can also occur due to irritation of nerves and uh, this occurs due to uh, peripheral neuropathy. Now chloramphenicol can also cause irritative effects like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, then super infection. Now as chloramphenicol is a broad spectrum antibiotic, it can cause super infection uh, which causes growth of opportunistic bacteria or growth of opportunistic uh, infections which can result for example in diarrhea. Then hypersensitivity reactions can also occur because of chloramphenicol uh, toxicity. Another very important adverse effect of uh, chloramphenicol is a grey baby syndrome. Now when high doses of chloramphenicol were given to neonates that is to a newly born baby, the baby stopped feeding, the baby vomited uh, and became hypotonic that is muscles of the body lost their tone, muscles of the body lost their strength. The baby became hypothermic that is body temperature uh, fell drastically, abdomen got uh, distended then the respiration became irregular and cyanosis developed that is body became gray colored due to lack of blood and oxygen this was followed by cardiovascular collapse and death of the neonate now these newly born babies or the neonates cannot adequately metabolize chloramphenicol and since chloramphenicol is not metabolized it is not excreted from the body and since it is not excreted, this results in increased concentration of chloramphenicol in the blood. And increased uh, chloramphenicol in the blood or high concentration of chloramphenicol in the blood impairs electron transport chain in the mitochondria and that results in the cell death. And this affects every cell of the body including liver, mitochondria, skeletal muscles leading to these uh, symptoms of uh, grey baby syndrome. So these are the adverse effects of chloramphenicol. Now few important drug interactions of uh, chloramphenicol. Now drugs like uh, phenobarbitone, phenytoin, rifampin enhance metabolism of chloramphenicol. So, this reduces plasma concentration of chloramphenicol and can cause failure of chloramphenicol therapy. Then, chloramphenicol inhibits metabolism of uh, drugs like uh, tolbutamide, chlorpropamide, warfarin, cyclophosphamide. Reduced metabolism of these drugs causes their accumulation 
and thus uh, toxicity of these drugs so dosage adjustment becomes very necessary so this is in brief on pharmacology of uh, chloramphenicol please note information provided in this video is only for academic informative purpose for use of chloramphenicol or for treatment of infections consult your physician now very important antibiotics should never be consumed without physician's consultation now if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video